Hello everyone and welcome to Watch Me Viz for Makeover Monday week 43 2022. This week we're looking at how major league pay this week we're looking at how major league pitchers are abandoning the fastball. I know a lot of you probably aren't familiar with baseball data, so maybe this will help you a little bit. My name's Andy Kriebel. I'm the host of Watch Me Viz. I also am the founder of vizwiz.com and the Dual Access Podcast. Uh, this week on the Dual Access Podcast, I'll be chatting with Will Sutton, the Iron Viz winner, and we're going to talk about how he built his winning mentality. So that should be interesting. We're not going to focus on what he did. We're going to focus on how he prepared for it mentally. So it should, should make for an interesting interview. Okay, so if you have any comments along the way, please feel free to leave them in the chat. I should be able to, uh, to see them, and I will do my best to answer them along the way. Okay, uh, so Ibad, uh, can you please provide us the data before starting the streaming? Um, the data is already available, so you can find it on the Makeover Monday website. Um, can you make a video business related? How, okay, so that's, uh, okay, maybe these are questions from another time. I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. So let's go ahead and get started. The article we're looking at this week is this article by 538, which is uh, one of my favorite websites. Uh, they particularly like their sports analytics. And the main chart we're going to focus on is this one here in the middle. So um, a clear majority of pitches used to be fastballs. So what's happening in baseball is it's becoming much more analytical. Uh, pitchers are not lasting as long into games or they're being taken out sooner. Um, there's a lot more science into different pitch types in which batters, uh, you know, uh, do particularly well on different pitches, and so there's a lot more data used strategically within within baseball. So it's it's pretty interesting. It does make the games way 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 too long now, but I guess that's another story. Okay, so let me go ahead and share my video, and let's get started. The data set uh, we're looking at here is this one by Fangraphs or the data came from Fangraph, sorry. And we can see we've got the inning number, or sorry, the, 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 the season, the number of innings pitched, the number of pitches, et cetera. Um, so we have lots and lots of stats here. I'm tempted to pivot this data and make it tall instead of wide, but for now I'm gonna leave it like this to see maybe what we can build uh, this way. Um, so actually, I think I'll go ahead and I think I'll go ahead and pivot it anyway. I think it to me it makes more sense to have it tall. Um, so I'm going to look at uh, now. Let's let's leave it like this for now and see see what happens. All right, let's go to sheet one, and we can see that everything is a measure, but the season field is should be um, a dimension. So I'm just going to drag season up to the uh, dimensions area. There we go. And if I look at the seasons, I can see that we have uh, the data from 2000 to 2022. We could look at maybe the number of pitches and we can see, uh, so something happened in 2020. So that's obviously because of COVID. Um, so maybe a better way to look at this data. So we've got pitches and then innings pitched. Um, so innings pitch goes declined, gets declined as well. So I'm gonna build a new metric. I don't know if I'm gonna use it or not, but I'm gonna look at the number of pitches per inning. So I'm going to create a new calculated field, and I'm going to call this pitches per inning. And we're going to look at the sum of pitches divided by the sum of innings pitched. And hit OK. Let's bring that into the rows instead, and I'm going to get rid of the other two fields. And let's make this, I'm going to make this continuous. And we see there really hasn't been that much change. So I'm going to turn on my mark labels just so I can see what's going on. We've got 16.14 at the beginning and 16.449 at the end. So not much change there. So probably not a whole lot to analyze from that perspective. I'm going to go ahead and set the default number format for that. So right click on pitches per inning, default properties number format and I'm gonna make it one decimal place. And now we should see that get updated. Okay, so that's good. Um, so I'm just gonna call this one pitches per inning. And I'm gonna create a new, a new chart. So the season field, right now I have it as discrete, so that gives us individual headers at the top, but I want it to be continuous by default. So I'm gonna right click on season and make it continuous. Okay, let me just one second. Um, just give me one moment, please. I want to make sure that 
um, I'm able to see all of your comments along the way. So if somebody could leave a comment, that would be great. So I can, uh, so I know that it's, um, you're able to see what I'm doing here as well. All right, so, um, oops. We understand things are tight. Okay, looks like it's working. I was just pulling up the video on my phone as well to make sure to make sure things are working. Right. Okay, so the article itself, if I go back here, it's looking at the share of fastballs. So I'm going to start with just fastball percentage and season. So season on the columns, fastball percentage on the rows, a similar number. So 0.491 and right. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to change all of these by default to be a percentage. So right click, default properties, uh, number format, percentage. Um, let's do, let's see, what do they have in the article? Um, let's see, I'll set it to zero decimal places for now. And again, if I turn on my labels, I'm gonna label maybe the min and the max. There we go. So it's gone from 64% to 49%. Okay, we could look at maybe change ups as well. So I'm gonna drag that on there and we could see the, oops, I don't wanna do minimax, I'm gonna do line ends. We could see that the number of fastballs has gone down, the change ups have gone up. And if you're curious to know what the abbreviations mean, in the data set I provided, there is a, uh, there is a glossary in there. So if I go to data.world and then, oh, sorry, if I go to the data set itself, when you download the file, there's a second tab in the Excel file. Actually, I have it here, and it's gonna look like this. So we've got all the different um, uh, pitches. Okay, so let me go over here. And uh, so, for example, if I wanted to know curveballs, we can see the number of curveballs has gone down. Um, in the source article, I believe down a bit farther, there's some more information about different pitchers. Now we don't have pitcher related data necessarily. Um, actually, we don't have it at all, but this maybe, maybe gives us a, a little bit of an idea on um, the types of pitches that are being thrown. So, uh, yeah, okay, so we've got that. I'm going to, if I look back at the, at the definition, so all of these, um, so slider cutter, um, so curveball change up. I'm, I'm going to just group together everything that's not a fastball. Um, oh no, I can't do it that way. Um, I need to create a new calculated field and let's call this uh, off speed. And I'm just going to add these together. Um, so how am I going to do this? Uh, because this won't work very well. Because um, if I just do that plus that plus that plus, oh, not fastball. Make sure I didn't miss any. The only thing I don't know is so I don't know if they consider cutter and split finger as fastball. I'm guessing probably not. So I'm gonna put off speed on here with fastball. Okay, now we should get everything adding up to 100%. Yeah, so that's good. Um, so let me rename this off speed percentage and default properties number format. And again, I'll send it to a percentage to zero decimals. Okay, so we can see the switch there, right? All right, so uh, again, let me check. If you have any questions, please uh, please let me know. Just type them in the chat. I can't see them, so um, hopefully, uh, let me turn the chat on here somehow, live chat, there we go. Okay, yeah, so no questions in the chat yet. Okay. So pretty simple. I mean, you know, honestly, I, I like the original visualization a lot. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Maybe what we could do is we could we could try to maybe create a small multiples view. Let's let's see what that does. But to in other words, I'm gonna look at maybe panels. So this is one, two, three, four different panels. Um, 
but I want to look at maybe each of these as a pitch type instead, but I want to build it in one view. So to, to well, let's see, I could, so I could do it as like eight different sheets, but I want to do it as, uh, as one sheet, like, um, like a trellis chart, for example. So I'm going to create a new sheet and I'm going to uh, connect to a new data source because I want to create a second one where I pivot the data. Okay, so we want to bring that in here. And I'm going to pivot everything. Let's uh, pivot. Let's uh, pivot. All right. So I'm going to call this one, this field, pitch type. Um, and then this one I'm going to call, oh, you know what? I didn't mean to do it that way. I think I put together two. Yeah, I don't want innings pitch and pitches. I just want these other fields. So let's pivot just those fields. OK. So I'm going to call this one pitch type. And I'm going to call this one uh, percent of pitches. All right, so let's go to a new sheet. And now that I have that, what I can do here, so season should be up here. Let's make that continuous. Right, so now if I put pitch type onto, let's say color percent of pitches onto rows, I can see all of them at the same time. Um, but I wanna split these out into, into different views. So I'm going to, um, actually, I'm going to create a group. And I'm going to create a group with everything except for fastball. So I'm going to call this one off speed percent. All right, so if I put that on color instead, we should get that. Yeah, there we go. OK. So that's the same as this, which is good. I was just trying to replicate it. Um, okay, so to do this, I'm going to need to, uh, let's see, let me, I just need to pause my screen sharing for a second. Okay, and bring up this over here. Okay, there we go. I just had to bring up some notes. All right, so what we're going to look at then is, um, let's see, let's look at, uh, I've got my cheat sheet here. Let's look at, um, what am I looking for? A trellis chart. Okay, so there's only a couple of calculations I need for this. And I'm just going to paste these in here. And I'm going to drag that one over. And then I'll just call this one columns. And I want to make both of these discrete. I do have a video on how to do this if you're if you're curious to know. So columns goes on the columns, rows goes on the rows. Um, okay, we don't need to do that. Place. Uh, so this is going to go on the columns. So the, uh, the date's going to go on the columns. The measure is on the rows. Where's my measure percent of pitches? OK. And then I need to put season on to detail as well. So it should be OK. I would need to change this to an attribute. And we get something like that, which is fine. And then my dimension is going to be pitch type. OK, so I need to make sure that pitch type is above season. I'm going to edit my table calc. And in the table calc, um, I want to do dimension, then date in that order, and then at the level pitch type. Hopefully this works. At the level. Pitch type. Okay, 
Well, that didn't work, did it? Um, oh, let's make it a line. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, because the season is at the seasons are adding up. Um, let's put this on color. Okay, so we have that. Oh, I see. Okay, so let's edit the axis, and I'm going to uncheck include zero. Okay, there we go. Right, and then we've got that there. That's fine. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort the pitch type by the field percent of pitches descending. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to now put the pitch type at the end of the label. Let's make that an attribute. Line ends, end of line, okay. And then I'm going to put the sum of pit, the pitches onto the label as well. Percent of pitches, default properties, number format. Actually, I'm going to do it here. Let's see, format, percentage, one decimal. Okay, so that gives us the percentage for each of the pitches. Um, entire view. So if we're going to clean this up, I'm going to hide my headers, um, hide my tooltip for those, get rid of the tooltip here. Okay, and I think, so if we hover over now, we see the season, the pitch type. Why does pitch type, okay, I don't need this tooltip. The season, the pitch type, and the percentage. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. So let's reorganize this a bit. Um, I want to cut this. Oh, my keyboard stopped working. Oh, I think my keyboard died. One second. It's strange. Okay, let me see if that's better now. Hang on one second, my keyboard died. Never had that happen in the middle of a presentation before, but first time for everything. Okay, let's see if that works now. Okay, there we go. So I want to get rid of that. And then, um, okay, so what's that look like? Okay, fastball. All right, so what I'm going to do now is in my pitch type, I'm going to edit my aliases. So this is going to be curve ball, change up, cutter, fastball, knuckle ball. Um, this is slider. Split. Split dash finger. Okay. Then this one's just unknown. Okay. So now when I look at my tooltip, it should be, it should look a bit better. Okay. So I'm going to actually move this down to the second line. What's that look like? Okay, so I think that's okay. Not, not too bad. Um, so yeah, so that's some, some small multiples. If I wanna do maybe a spark line, I would put, uh, let's see, percent of pitches there, season there. Let's uh, edit the axis. I'm going to do uncheck that independent 
So this is just going to show me the trend. I think I've done this before during Watch Me Viz. And let's sort the pitches again by the field descending percent of pitches. Okay, there we go. All right. Any questions yet? Okay, still no questions on the chat. I don't know if that's good or bad. All right, so so this is our, um, yeah, this is our percent of pitches. Uh, I'm gonna create a new calculated field, so let's call it latest percentage. And I'm gonna say if season equals uh, max season, then I want to return the percent of pitches. Uh, and okay, so if we make this a dimension and we put it here, okay, so it's splitting up the view. Okay, so I did something wrong here. So, oh, I need to fix this on pitch type. Okay, there we go. So we can see we now have the, the value that's on the end of the line for each one. So let's default properties, number format. So what I've done here is I've uh, just gotten the, I'm just uh, creating a column for the latest value. And I'm doing that with the level of detail expression so that I can make it with a fixed level of detail expression so that I can make it a discrete dimension. So I can now format this. And let's say I make this, you know, I don't know. 22 point, I don't know, maybe not quite that big, whatever. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, something like that. So let's format this again. I'm going to actually right align them. Okay. And what's our latest year? Our latest year is 2022. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to rename this one again. Oh, that's OK. We can leave it like that. So these are spark lines, which I think don't look too bad. Um, what else could we do? Um, let's see. So we've got the original chart. We've got that. Let's see what else. Let me look at my notes here, see if there's anything else that would be particularly interesting. So we've done a starburst chart on on uh, on watch me this before um, okay let's see it's only 323 would uh, just leave me a, leave me a comment in the chat would you like me to show you again how to do a starburst chart so a starburst chart is something uh, it's like where the kind of lines go out from the middle um, looks like a starburst. Um, I can show you that if if you'd like. Okay, so I'm trying to think what else we could do here. I mean, it's not it's not um, you know that that difficult of a data set. Um, in this one, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to duplicate this field, make it a dual axis, and synchronize. And I'm going to make the the one in the back. I'm going to make an area chart. Okay. So that gives it a, a makes it a, a a bit more interesting, I guess. And uh, how many seasons do we have here? So we've got how many marks do we have here? So that's uh, forty. So twenty. Okay. So yeah, I can't do that with this particular view. Unknown three percent. Okay. Um, Uh, so Peter, not knowing baseball, but do different types of ball end up a different place over the plate? Well, not necessarily is the answer. Um, ideally, you're putting it somewhere where the batter can't hit it, and it's still what's called a strike, meaning um, so the strike zone goes from the knees to the armpits and then over the plates what the, where the pitch knees end up if the batter does not swing at it. Um, but you're sometimes you're trying to trick the batter and you might throw what's called a curveball that curves. Um, and you might try to trick the batter so that they swing and miss. Um, I'm not sure if that helps answer your question at all. 
Okay, so let me go back here on the labels again, and I'm going to just right align those and maybe put them above. Yeah. Okay. So that looks that looks okay. So let's uh, hide the header, and I think we're good there. And last thing I might do here is match the mark color. Maybe make it. Let's make it maybe a tableau semi bold and maybe 10 point, something like that. Okay, so that's a bit better. Um, <clears throat> still not particularly interesting. Um, we've got our spark lines, which I think look okay. Uh, we don't really need to label the beginning and the end. Oh, okay, here's something we could do. Um, let's look at, um, okay, so let's look at uh, season. And let's look at percent of pitches and then pitch type. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be able to, I want to click on one of these marks and I want to grab that year and I want to compare the value for all the other years to that year. So I'm going to create a, uh, let's see, we can probably do it with a set action. So let's call it season set. And right now I'm just going to compare everything to 2002. So what I want to do now is for each pitch type, I want to get the value of 2002. So let's call it um, season set value. So if season set, then I want to return the pitch percentage um, end, and I want to do this for each pitch type. So fixed uh, pitch type. And the reason I need to write this as a level of detail expression is because I need this value, this percent of pitches to show up along every, actually, let me do it without the LOD so you can see what I mean. Um, okay, let me just get rid of that. Right, so let me just put this on as a label, for example. We only see the label at this first mark. When I hover over, so if you look here on the tooltip, it says season set value is null. So ideally, what I want to be able to do is I want to compare the percentage of pitches here, which is points, uh, so 60.7%, to the value that's at the, that I've chosen uh, based on my set. And I can't do that because both values do not exist at this point. So when I change this to a level of detail expression, so let me change this to fixed on pitch type, and I want to do it for each pitch type, I want to get the value um, at that set. Okay, so now when I hover, notice how that value is now showing up everywhere for each pitch type. So now I can compare the value that's in my set to the value for that season. Um, so let's create another calculated field, and I want to call this change, um, let's see, um, okay, I'll just call it change for now. Um, so I want to look at the um, so it should be I think this minus the sum of season set value let's see if this does what I'm thinking it does hit OK uh, I'm going to move this off of text and let's bring change onto here okay so here everything's now comparing to so let me look at fastball so the number of fastballs is declining okay so that's good so now if I change my set, for example, to let's say I want it to be you know, 2010, hit apply, then everything shifts. So you can see everything shift here at the bottom. I could maybe change that to 2022 and apply, and now everything is compared to 2022. Okay, great. So now I need to set up my set action. So I'm gonna get rid of, I'm gonna move that to detail and let's look at worksheet actions and I want to add a set action I'm going to call this update season set I want to do it on select I only want to allow them to pick one uh, one value the target set is season set I want to assign the values and I want to keep the values when they uh, let's see so if I remove the values uh, I think let's just try what happens when I remove. I think that will reset the chart. So if I click on that, it looks like that. If I click off, okay, it does nothing. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so let me check my, let me undo dash worksheet actions. Okay, so I want to keep all values, keep the set values. Okay, so now when I click there and then click off, it does that. Okay, great. What I don't want to do is I don't want to see the, um, I don't want to see the, um, the highlighting when I click on something. So there's a couple ways we can handle that. I'm going to try this way first. I'm going to create a calculated field. I'm going to call it uh, D highlight. And I'm just going to put the word dummy in here. And I'm going to put that onto the detail shelf. And now if up here on the menu, I should be able to just choose de-highlight. And let's see if that does it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now everything's automatically de-highlighted when I click it. Okay, so this is now comparing everything to the, uh, let's take this out of the tooltip. Um, okay, so that's now doing a nice little interactive version there. So that's good. Um, let's duplicate this sheet. And maybe now what I want to do is I want to create another set that's based off of the pitch type. So let's create a set. I'll just call it pitch type set. And let's say fastball. And now what I want to do is I'm going to um, duplicate this. OK. So I'm going to call this season uh, and pitch set value. So I want to say if season set and pitch set. So it's going to get the value of the single mark that I click on. Then I want to do, so I don't think I need to do that yet because I don't want it for each pitch type. So let's see what that does now. So season and pitch value, put that onto label and I get the same value everywhere. Okay, great. That's what I was hoping for. Let me rename this because I think I put the word copy in there. And now I'm going to duplicate this field. And I'm going to call this change uh, versus pitch and season. So instead of season set value, I'm going to have, OK. So now what should happen here, so let me add an action for this sheet, um, this sheet. I want to get rid of that one that we can leave. OK, so let's add a change set values. We want to the update the pitch type set. And we want to assign values, keep values. And let's call this one update um, sees uh, no pitch type set. Okay, and I didn't. I should have not gotten rid of the other action. So change set values, update season set. I should have left this one in here. Single select and keep. Okay, and I think I need to edit this one to do single value only. Okay, so now if I click on this one, it should change. Everything should compare to that one. That one mark. Um, did I put the right, oh, I got the wrong field on my, there we go. So if I click on this value now, you can see the scale changing, but it's not very interesting. Okay, that didn't, that wasn't particularly helpful. Um, so yeah, so I think I, I think I like this one. Um, so maybe what I'll do now is I'm going to, um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to, I'm going to use my pitch type set here, but I'm going to put that on to, let's move this to detail and put pitch type set on color. And so now what I want to do is I want it to highlight the pitch that, or the, um, I want it to highlight the pitch that I selected. So I'm going to add in another worksheet action. Add action, change set values, update pitch type set, single value. 
Okay. So what should happen now is I click on this one, that line should become the that should become the highlighted one. Okay. So that looks all right. So everything is now comparing to that one value. We click off and now that value is highlighted. Okay, so I think I like that. I do think I have. Um, we're going to use Philadelphia Phillies colors because they are in the World Series and they are my hometown team. So we're going to use those and we'll use the 76ers, which is the Philadelphia basketball team for the secondary color. Okay. So uh, maybe that's a bit too light of a gray. So let's go to maybe this one. Let's try this one. Okay, that's a bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to label, um, let's see, so what is my, so this needs to be off of the tooltip. Um, the change is zero. The pitch type is color, percent of pitches. Okay. I want to get this season set. Um, selected and I'm going to say if season set then season end. So I'm going to use this in my tooltip so put that on list that needs to be a, let's put that on to our tooltip and we should see okay so I need to need to make this a level of detail expression so so if I hover over my tooltip you'll see my season set selected and my tooltip is blank I want this the value I chose to be showing everywhere so I'm just gonna make this the min doesn't really matter how I aggregate it and if I hit apply you'll now see I see that season set selected okay so let's default properties number format no decimals, get rid of the comma. Right, okay, so if we look at this pitch type now, unknown pitch types, um, so we're looking at 2004 versus 2008, and it is 7% higher, or uh, yes, so 7% higher. So percent of pitches and change. So let's format those. So change um, on the pane. We want, no, we can do it on, yeah, so on, let's make this a percentage to one decimal. Okay. And on the axis, we're going to make it a percentage to no decimals. Ah, oh, but then the change gets messed up. See, that's really annoying. Um, okay, I think I can undo that. Right, so I believe if I set my change default properties, number format to no decimals. There we go. So if you set your default, it'll do the axis. And then if I, when you, if you change the format within the view in the pane, you can have a second um, type of number format. So I'm going to format this again. So let me format and I'm going to make it custom with a plus and a minus. So minus 0.0%, .0 and then uh, semicolon, and then 0.0%. Okay. So the change, okay. So let's now update our tooltip. So we're going to put the season. Okay, and the pitch type. Uh, no, so pitch type, I want to do, okay. Versus that. Um, So I want to actually do something like that. And then this should be Okay, maybe this works. 
Let's see what this looks like. So 2014, the cutter percent of pitches were 0 0.062. 0 .06, uh, so 6.2%. Okay, so percent of pitches. Number format, percentage, that. But then in here, format, percentage, one decimal. Okay, so percent of pitches is 5.7%, and then the change versus 2008 is plus 0.4%. Okay, so I think that looks okay. Um, good enough for me for the tooltip. I'm going to now put on a, let's format the view. I'm going to set my my zero line to be maybe something a bit more obvious. Yeah, maybe something like that. Maybe make it a bit thicker. And then my grid lines, I'm going to, let's see, so I want to turn my columns off. And maybe my rows, I will make maybe a dashed line or something like that to make them a bit more faint. Okay, maybe something like that. Get rid of my axis rulers. And that cleans up the view. Okay. Um, now I want the plus and the minus on the axis as well. So I'm going to go back to my number format for my change. And I'm going to make this plus and then um, minus 0%. OK. And then let me format that again. Change default properties, number format. I need to also format the 0. OK, there we go. So it looks something like that. Um, we can now, let's see what we can do in the in the tooltip, or sorry, in the title. So um, let's call this, um, how have pitches, um, how has the percent of pitches changed since, and I wanna put in my, Season set selected, I think. Okay. Okay. So I think that's I think that's okay there. Let's maybe make this uh, a bit. That's fine. Let's make it uh, maybe tableau semi bold. Okay. So uh, I'm wondering now, do we really need the uh, maybe we'll color the end of the red line. So for the red line, all right, so what are we looking at here? So this is a red line. Okay, so what do we have here? Pitch type. So pitch type um, selected. If pitch type set, then pitch type. And so if I put that onto my label, I get just the label down here on the bottom right. Okay, and then um, right. So what else could I put down there? I think that's okay. So. Okay, any, any thoughts? I don't, um, so Dan Sanchez, I've always wondered if there was a way to have the tooltip and access formatting of a measure not linked. Oh, there you go, thanks. I'm glad I could be helpful, Dan. Um, okay, so let's just go with this one. I think, I think this is okay. What do you think about the color? Should, should I just get rid of that on color and put the uh, pitch type onto color? I know it's very colorful, but I wonder if we could come up with a color palette. You know that has. Um, let's see. Why don't Why don't we um, Let's do this. Let's look at pitch type. And let's look at pers. Uh, let's see. Season, but let's make this discrete. 
and then the percent pitches. Okay, so I'm thinking of maybe creating a group. So let me sort that. So we've got one, two, three, four, and then maybe I put these others into an other category. So maybe we could, let's create a new group. So let's highlight those, group those together, uh, edit the alias, let's call that others. Okay, and now what if we put that onto the color instead? So let's move pitch type back to detail and then put group one onto color. Okay, so now we've got now we've got four colors. Um, oh, and maybe we should just use that as our detail as well. So pitch type group. Let's get rid of pitch type. And now in our tooltip is messed up. Okay, so tooltip. And this should be insert group one. Okay. So now we can. Let's see, so we could do, um, let's see, what color palette should we use here? We need something that has enough variety. So we've got one, two, three, four, we need five colors, a palette with five colors. I think I have an MLB color palette somewhere. Here we go. Okay, so let's do maybe fastballs. Uh, let's make those red, because those are usually fast. Let's make it a, yeah, that's fine. Sliders, let's maybe make those uh, maybe a light blue. We'll make the others a gray. Curveball, we'll make. Um, so we did a blue, did a gray. Oh, there aren't very many colors, are there? Okay, maybe we won't use that. One, two, three, four. Let's maybe make. We can't do red and green together. Um. Okay, let's do this. Let's make that um, curveball, S ball, slider, others. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to move that below that one. All right, let me go to my sheet here. Okay, so I should be able to actually, let me just, let me go back here. Okay, so my pitch type group, default properties, sort. I'm going to sort by um, do this. Okay, so that's not going to work. Let's sort by the field, descending, percentage. Pitch. Okay, so now they're at least uh, colored correctly. Okay, um, pick some colors in the National League. I could pick some. I think these colors are okay now. Um, how about some good old heat map? I uh, wonder why there's no data for cutter percentage for it. So, uh, so Maya, they didn't start tracking that yet, those particular pitch types in 2002 and 2003. Um, the category to show to you. If you have 2022.3, then the new dynamic zone visibility could be used to expand the other category to show the detail. Yep, that is 100% correct. So if I click that, it moves it around, and so on. Okay, so now my pitch type selected doesn't need to be on there. Worksheet actions, this worksheet, I don't need my pitch type selected. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm going to put the um, the pitch type group onto label as well. Okay, I'm going to label the end of the line by the season, just the maximum um, for each line. Okay, oh, it didn't give me the little dots on the end like I was hoping for. Uh, Min max. Okay, that's fine. But now they're overlapping, so I want to allow overlap. Yeah, something like that. So if I click on that. All right, and let's get the labels to match the mark color. Let's make them Tableau Medium. OK. 
okay and then maybe we could put the um, let's put the change percentage percent of pitches onto label and then we could put the maybe the change where's change onto label okay so now we get three three things uh, so I'm going to go into my label of course it doesn't keep them correct pitch type um, percent of pitches actually maybe all we need there is the change so let me let me get rid of percent of pitches we just want that on detail and we want the change okay so in my label I'm gonna have that and then just the change okay what does that look like so what happened there percent of oh wrong field here this should be my pitch type group all right something like that um label allow overlap should we do that okay i think that's fine there we go all right so i think i'm going to go with that um how does the percentage pitches change since 2007 so let's throw this in a dashboard now let's kill the phone view because that's the first thing I'd, uh actually let's leave the phone view because this might look okay on the phone i'm going to make it maybe default to 800 by 600 I'm going to uh, bring my sheet, where's your sheet six, into the view. I can get rid of that. I'm going to show my caption. And this is where I like to put my footer, or my, yeah, my footer. So uh, data, data source is fan crafts. Um, created by, oh wow, can't even spell my own last name right. Okay. And the whole thing, I'm going to just give it a bit of padding here. So, All right, and I need to put something on here. Click a year. To compare. Um, click a season to see how other seasons compare. All right. So I'm going to make that uh, maybe Tableau Light. Oops. Yeah, Tableau Light. Let's maybe. Oh, what the heck. Tableau light. Let's make it italics and maybe 10 point. And what does that look like? Click a season. Okay, so now I need to go into this worksheet action and make it a dashboard action. So this sheet, edit, and I need to make this a dashboard action. Okay, and then the highlight, I need to edit and make this also a uh, dashboard that de-highlight so that should work okay so the de-highlight didn't carry over so worksheet dashboard actions the sheet one action on click that should do it okay there we go Okay, so we can see our title updating. Um, okay, so uh, you can use custom formatting and put the plus at the beginning. Um, not sure what you mean for the formatting there. Um, okay, so let me edit the axis. I'm going to change that. And let's see, let's, uh, so format that all looks okay. I think, I think I'm pretty good there. All right, so 
And now I'm going to go on my device layout. Now this one I don't think looks good horizontally, so I'm going to, or sorry, vertically. So I'm going to unlock it. Click on device preview and swap it to be vertical. And you see the size is 375 by 667. So I'm going to change the height to uh, 375. And then I'm going to unpin this so that it fits the height of the view. Now if I click on it here, it should work as well. So there we go. Yep. So that should be good. If I click on fastball, you'll see everything changes to that. And yeah. So I can go back to my phone and now I have created a mobile view as well. And let's see what other kind of questions. Um, oh, answering the question from Maya. Okay. Sorry about that. How do you get a plus to show for positive? Oh, sorry, Maya, I, I missed your question there. Um, so what I did was in my change, my number format in, um, is it? There we go. So in the custom number format, you can see a, uh, so first thing I chose was percentage and I said one decimal. And then once I had that, I changed it to custom and just put a plus in the front. So, and then I use a semicolon to separate my positives and my negatives. So minus 0.0%. .0%. And then I can use a third, a second semicolon to give me a third section, which is how do I want to format the zero? So I'm going to format it as 0%. And there you go. So you see zero doesn't have any decimals. These do have a decimal, um, but I, I don't actually want those to have a decimal, so I'm just gonna undo just to get it back. But hopefully that answers your, your question there, Maya. Um, okay. Okay, lovely. Um, do you have a detailed tutorial on a custom formatting? Well, it depends on what you mean by custom formatting. Um, so, uh, so Fanius, uh, I don't know what you mean by custom formatting. Um, not quite sure what you mean by that. Okay, so I'm going to call it quits there. Thank you, everybody. Uh, kept it to under an hour today. I, I like how this turned out. I think it looks okay. And I appreciate your attention. Um, either Wednesday or Thursday this week, I'm going to have that interview with Will Sutton. Um, I think you might enjoy that. If you can't catch it on YouTube, it'll also be on um, Spotify, um, uh, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to them, you can find it on there as well. It's called the Dual Access Podcast. And thanks for for uh, for watching this week. Everybody have a good week.